Let's start with the background. AUB, Ross Beirut. Keslik, Mount Lebanon. Indiana University. Indiana <laughs> University, Chatham House. Oh, oh yeah. The UK, America. There is, I think, a background that has, has not been explored. And allow me to start with you, Nadim. I think Ross Beirut still defines you, even when Ross Beirut is no longer Ross Beirut. And I've learned a lot from the way you describe your interpretation of many words, sectarianism, secularism, Ottoman cosmopolitanism, everything we've discussed before. But is it fair to say that your initial years and your experience in Ras Beirut and AUB is really the foundation for the way you see things moving forward? Is that the backbone to where you are right now? When you write in Arab news, when you sometimes show up on TV, when you talk to me, is that something that is still in you many, many decades later? Um, I mean, it applies to everybody. I mean, your your childhood is is your formative years. It's up to, I think, you're formed by the place you've lived in till the age of seventeen. But I want to to comment on on your description of the change. The whole world changes in forty years. Mm. <clears throat> so. To bring it to uh, to preempt a bit of, of what you're 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 distinguishing between Ras Beirut and and uh, Mount Lebanon and Ashrafi and all that and Kaslik, uh, I don't think they can exist without each other. So Ras Beirut, as it as it was, which is a cosmopolitan secular place where people mixed very naturally, could not have existed if there was no. Ashrafiye and Dahye and Tari Ijdide and and it's the way the way uh, uh, cities in the Mediterranean and in Ottoman uh, in the Ottoman world operated. You had quarters. You had a Jewish quarter, a Turkish quarter, an Armenian quarter, a Maronite quarter, Albanians, Europeans, uh, you name it, and everyone felt some sort of security in their quarters when they went back there at night and they interacted very naturally in the middle in in the Ras Beirut of these cities where people interact naturally and the interaction is a bit of hypocrisy is a bit of they're different people when they when they when they interact in in the, in the city and when there is tension that's when you have sectarianism. People, people are not sectarian or not sectarian. You're not either or. Right? When if there is sectarian, if there is tension, people people regroup to their quarter where they feel secure, where they have protective boundaries, and uh, and that 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 preserves the the peace in in in, in a way. So Ras Beirut flourished as long as the boundaries in the rest of the country were safe and there and sectarianism was not that that uh, pronounced in mm. in so so that there's an interaction it's not like a separate area in your mm. mind when you're writing today even when it's not directly about lebanon only let's say you're focusing on the region and changes in the region mm. does aub and ras beirut still fit into your writing? Well, uh, yes. I mean, AUB, certainly. I mean, I, I was in America for seven years mm. and I, I wrote a piece that uh, American-Arab relations is not uh, Donald Trump meeting Abdel Fattah Sisi. American-Arab relations is uh, uh, missionaries, American missionaries coming to Beirut almost exactly 200 years ago when America itself was less than 40 years old and they were savage, half of it were savages. I mean, uh, California wasn't, wasn't even part of it. And uh, they, they learned from us as much as we learned from them. And, they, and the interaction between uh, Americans and, and, our, and the whole Arab world is through that process rather than, rather, rather than uh, the, the politics we have since World War II, if you like, mm -hmm. which which has changed. Yeah. 
So I'll segue over to Hisham by saying that, for better or worse, I'm a product of the same thing. Meaning, I grew up in Hamra. I went to AUB. I studied there, got my master's degree there. I lived there. My mom still lives there. Even when I don't feel at ease in every part of Hamra or Ras Beirut, the way I once did, I still think of it as home, for better or worse. Mm. Even the podcast's name is a tribute to the trees of AUB, the trees of knowledge, the Banyan trees. And what drew me to someone like Samir Asir was his complexity, meaning he wrote in French, in Arabic. He was, I think, Syrian and Palestinian, a Christian who was comfortable in among leftists in West Beirut, and someone who could actually fit into March 14 without shame. And I like mm -hmm. that. I like the layers and the complexities within him. And I think that's kind of where I find myself, always holding on to something, knowing that it's on the decline. In your childhood, is there anything in that story, let's say, that doesn't fit into the way you grew up here? I mean, uh, I'm from the Shuf, and uh, if we're going to talk about my childhood, we'll have to talk about one of the most violent episodes of the Lebanese Civil War, mm -hmm. just Harb al-Jabal. We are here in Hamdun, or next to Hamdun. Yeah. Um, so my childhood was very much uh, defined by Harb al-Jabal um, because I went through uh, Hisar Der al uh, 100 days of really difficult, you know, probably the most difficult 100 days in, in the history of contemporary Lebanon, certainly in the history of the civil war, where the Christians were actually cleansed from, from the Shuf, and they ended up uh, in Der Lamar for 100 uh, days, and then they had to leave the Shuf mm. uh, completely, and they became refugees in, the, in their own land. So no, I mean, uh, the, there's not a lot of cosmopolitan, uh, cosmopolitan uh, dimension in, in that story. It's more, uh, if we're talking about my childhood, yeah. uh, it's a story about uh, a young person opening up to life against the backdrop of, backdrop of ethnic cleansing. Because that was, that's hard to have ethnic cleansing happening for the second time in, in what, uh, 120 years. Um, so there's nothing rosy about that experience. But, uh, but then again, I'll have to say that I, I feel you are a bit romanticizing and essentializing Hamra because Hamra is also the place, for instance, where Hazb uh, Sur al Qawm al grew as an organization. And if there's one party we can call proto fascist, that would, that would be it, and that's Hamra as well. Uh, AUB is the place where Anton Saadi taught uh, German to, uh, to people. So uh, Hamra is not only defined yeah. by cosmopolitanism, just as Mount Lebanon is not in the, the ultramaronite castle or, the, or, or like the, the, you know, the ultra, I don't know, Druze castle that, that you think of it. There are a lot of people that, I mean, um, there's a lot of uh, interaction between communities, inter opening up to the world that happened in and because of Mount Lebanon. Mm. And there's a lot of uh, political extremism that came out of Hamra. So this this Mount Lebanon versus Hamra thing that you seem to be doing, and it's not convincing uh, mm. to me. So this is this is one dimension. The other dimension, be which nice, I find... Be nice, Hisham. Be nice. This is the <laughs> first <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> I've already... What have I done? I've, I've romanticized. I've put things in, in bleak, That's, black and white. Yeah, I mean... It, I'm you're, here with like, because you're ideological. I remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. I think so. I'm, I'm, no, I, I'm seriously. No, I mean, George uh, yeah. uh, Habash studied in 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 AUB. Uh, um, Wadi Haddad studied. I mean, Wadi Habab, Wadi Habab was a terrorist. Um, a lot of political extremism, a lot of anti-Lebanese uh, 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 ideologies grew uh, or, or flourished in, in in Hamra, and that's not good even from a liberal perspective because I feel Lebanon. Uh, as an experiment, had a lot of liberal aspects to it. So this, the destruction of Lebanon uh, was uh, a disaster for modernity in, in the Levant, for liberalism in the Levant. And, and lots of that came from Hamra, whereas lots of uh, opening up to new languages, opening up to uh, Europe, opening up came, came from Mount Lebanon. So this Mount Lebanon versus Hamra thing you're doing, I find very mm. questionable from a from a historical uh, uh, perspective. Let me just disagree with that. I find, also, you, I find you, you, hold on, I yeah. have to interrupt. Yeah. Because okay. you've already asserted certain things that are not true. Okay. I'm the, not oh. questioning, I'm actually trying to learn. Yeah, okay. Mm. So there's no prejudice towards Mount Lebanon. Yeah. Or there's no favoritism. It's really how somebody grows up. Yeah. 
So they're not saying Mount Lebanon. We're doing this in Pamdun. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. I love Pamdun. No, you, I, there's no question. Let, let me let me yeah. ask it in a way that maybe you won't take it. It's, I'm not making it personal. It's trying to understand the foundation. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, what you're saying is all true. There's nothing incorrect in terms of the names you mentioned or or even the, the parties that are very, very... Uh, Pathetic today. Yeah. Let me no, let no, me no, rescue you. No, from, wait, that, you're let me rescue you. You hole. already need rescuing. <laughs> let me rescue myself. Then you rescue okay. me. All right. But but there's. I think back to AUB yeah. as that is not the mainstream. So let, let me give you an example. Before my time, yeah. Uh, one of the best stories I've read about AUB and Ras Beirut, by extension, I think it's it's the third chapter. Of a book called Dream Palace of the Arabs. Oh, yeah, of course. Fuad yeah. Ajami. There's a story about a poet. Great guy. Khalil Hawi. Khalil Hawi. Yeah. Who's a Ras Beiruti and goes to AUB. He's from Durshwe. He's an SSNP member and he's a Lebanese nationalist. Mm. He supports the Palestinians. He supports the Americans. He supports, I think, every side of the story. Ends up killing himself. Of course. So the mm-hmm. suicide of that individual, I think, is also part of the story. Meaning that complicated person to me, is not a bad person. It's somebody trying to find his way. And AUB, if you go back in time, this could be just an age thing. Nadim, I think you're 20 years older than me, or maybe a little more. You're in your late 60s. I thought you were not going to bring this up. <laughs> you're in your 40s, Hisham, you're in your 40s. I'm early 20s. Early 20s, well, that makes sense, yeah. So I'm the oldest one on stage. <laughs> that the Hamra, I think Nadim refers to something I don't know. I'm too young to have known it. Yeah. But my mm-hmm. reading of it, my understanding of it, is that AUB produced more good than bad. And I don't think Ross Beirut... Oh, I agree with that, of course. Yeah. So, course. And you can think of all the other people that graduated from AUB that are shining stars. So I, I don't know if... I'm not trying to polarize or divide. It's more like where you see... And you said it up front. Ethnic cleansing. That's your childhood. So that, to me, it's that's, actually... That's Habel Jabal that I lived as a right. child. Correct. But I was thinking more of, let's say, even education or where yeah. you went to where you went to university. Did I get it right that it's at USIC? Well, well, uh, I, I did finish but before leaving to the U.S. I meant. Well, I studied uh, law at. Uh, I finished my doctorate in law. Yeah. At, at USIC. USIC. Okay. But in the meantime, I was studying political science at USG. Mm-hmm. And this is when I discovered that, you know, I'm, I'm married to law, but I'm in love with political science. So I decided to basically jump ship mm. after finishing the doctorate degree. And then I went to the States uh, for the PhD. Oh, so and it so, started in San Jose and then finished in the U.S.? The, uh, the political science side of my education, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, but so Castique is just one one place because I also, my master's degree in, in law was at Sages. I see. You see, okay. so there are a lot of places I studied yeah. in and mm. then... But you, you're focusing on on Kaslik and um, I, I. No, I thought you said. I thought maybe that was during the war that maybe there was some link to Kaslik. No, no, uh, yeah. the war when the war finished, I was twelve, uh, mm. so I I never I wasn't in, in university during the war. Um, the war ended. I was still not even in high school. And you spent most of your childhood in one place, when you said the ethnic cleansing and. Well, so I was born in the Shouf in yep. 1978, yep. and the Harb al-Jabal happened in 1983. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in September 1983, uh, Harb al-Jabal was at its height. Yeah. And essentially, this is when the Christians of Halay and 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 the Shouf basically were, were kicked out. Of course, they were not kicked out uh, uh, automatically. They were first first uh, besieged at their Lamar, at least those who were who made it to their Lamar. Many did not, unfortunately. And so after a hundred uh, days, they you know, they were driven out of the mountain. Mm-hmm. Were so you that's, driven out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was my family. I was I was a five year old uh, yeah. kid uh, besieged at their Lamar. And yes, I'm, I apologize. I don't know you as much as I know Nadim. That's fine. Uh, but I've been to both of your homes. Yeah, Nadim, you now live in Beit Miri. Hisham, you live closer to Beirut, Hazmi, yes. or close to Hazmi. Is that where you grew up as a child? Was it there? No, actually, I grew up in Ayn al-Rumaini. And, and that, also, that was also a defining exper- experience because Ayn al-Rumaini yes. was a very hot front yeah. uh, during the war. Yeah. Um, so essentially, the first five years uh, of my life during the war were in the Shouf. 
and then another seven years, and I ended up and you know that, and then 1990 came and the war yeah. ended. But so yeah, I mean, the, if we're talking about the war years, I spent them between uh, the Shuf and the very first early years, and then I ended up Thank you for letting me ask this because it, I don't know these things. Yeah, that's fine. And I wanted to go down this road as much as I could. Before we get mm. to the next topic, Nadim, you wanted to. No, say, yeah, I wanted. To, I I wanted to say wanted that to save you at some point. To, to the distinction is, is the, <laughs> the distinction is is uh, best described in an essay by Albert Harani, where he describes the uh, the ideology of the mountain versus the ideology of the city. So so the city, Beirut, is is a completely different environment and mm. completely different ideology than. Than, than the rest of Lebanon and especially than, than, than the mountains. Because Beirut became a hub for the whole region uh, from the early 19th century uh, on, onwards. And it kept on attracting people from the region uh, until the, the, the 70s, ba ba basically. So whereas the mountain has its own defined uh, identity, and its sphere of operation is, is much narrower than, than Beirut. Before we continue, may I uh, object about uh, the, um, <laughs> the romanticization of the Ottoman world that I see in Nadim's... Uh, I thought we were going to pass. Very quickly, very yeah. quickly, because w when you are romanticizing the Ottoman city, you seem to be forgetting that the Ottoman Empire was an Islamic caliphate, yeah. and under that Islamic caliphate, uh, like... I would say most Muslim-dominated societies, caliphate or not, it was a hierarchical society yes. in which one people were a group of people were on on top, uh, just because they, you know, they they had the privilege of being born in a specific sectarian denomination, yes. and others were well not on top simply because they were not born into that specific denomination. Yes. There's nothing romantic about uh, no, but there is that, something. Uh, there's call, something. I would, this, I would call this a religious racism. No, there's uh, something uh, relevant. There's to... nothing romantic uh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> at all. There's and, something. and also, I mean, talking about the Ottoman city, I mean, the Ottoman city were the place where... Uh, <laughs> the Ottoman city were the place where, for instance, uh, Ar Armenian Turks were slaughtered, uh, where uh, Christians in Damascus were slaughtered in 1860, yeah. where Christians in Aleppo were slaughtered in 1850. So there's nothing... Jeddah, rom uh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing romantic about, you know... The, the no, but being, you're, you're being calling non, it romantic. non-Muslim living in a Muslim Hello. caliphate. Hello. Okay. Hello. So Hello. I, ju I just want to say, there's nothing romantic listen, about listen, that. Listen, and I think listen. you're white you're whitewashing what was essentially something that mm. is very problematic and continues to be problematic to this day. Let me interrupt. Yeah. No, but... Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. It's, not, it's not... You'll get your... One minute rebuttal. Let me interrupt. It's not a rebuttal. I'm, I agree with him on on many things, and I'm even more extreme than he is. But <laughs> I don't but, think this is extreme. But, but, but it's a just, question. Yeah. It's a question of interpretation. Yeah, okay. It's, Could I let you interpret yeah. a little later? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because I think that would. I, let me. Let me start over. You'll yeah. get a chance to talk. I promise. Yes. I don't know because you. I, I'll let you yeah. talk. But I want to say something. What's happening right now? happened in this field, I think in April. I did an episode with Nadim at Alias. And Hisham, I think you watched parts of that episode and you wanted to comment. Mm. This is, I think, April, maybe, maybe March? Yeah, maybe April, March. Yeah. Nadim and I were walking in this field by chance. And I mentioned to Nadim, I said, Nadim, was good, we were, here. we're walking somewhere in this field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, Nadim, would you be up to doing this? And we agreed back then to wait a bit because you had just been on the podcast. Right. So then I invited you to MTV podcast. So the reason we're doing this in Iris domain, which should be explained, is because this was happening on my phone <laughs> while walking in Iris domain. And I couldn't control it. I'm like, Nadim, we have to do this in person. Because you were calling him at the same time. I think yeah. you were I, I remember. Yeah. I remember. It was the maybe message, the day message, after. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. 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 So that's why we're doing it here. Yeah. But I'll let you, if you wanted to say something. No, I just want to say that, you know, they, they, they federalists in Lebanon. You're going too far. They've discovered, not they've, yet, not they've yet. discovered one principle called that, that the, the religion of the people have to be the same as the, ru the ruler. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, 
I mean, it's it's. I saw it in all the federal Federalist documents in 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 Lebanon. I don't know if you in, in yours you, you mentioned, wait, it. but if, if that was if end. that was the case, we would all be Sunni Muslims. Well, alhamdulillah, and there would be no problem. Let's leave that. No, to some, the end. somebody needed to pay the jizya, so we couldn't have become financially. It wasn't feasible, but we can go to this more later on. So, yeah, let's say federalism to win. Uh, eh. Wait, some more wine. <laughs> some more wine. <laughs> I wanted the childhood because I wanted to know how you saw the world changing. You're right, Nadim. In 40 years, everything has changed. And Hisham, we're closer to age. You're two or three years maybe older than me. Mm. I have the same memories of conflict, but my direct experience with it is not the way you, you saw it up front. And the forced exile, and I think it's good that you're actually using words that people here tend to be shy, they tend to shy away from. This is a form of ethnic cleansing. So I owe you that thanks to making that an emphasis when you speak, not just an alternative digital media, you go on TV, you're very confident and pointing at violence that happens. So I thank you for that. And you bring credibility when you say it too. Mm. Even I think it was on MTV two weeks ago or last week, the gentleman sitting next to you, I think his name was Albert, right? His name escapes me now. No, the Alfred. Bald, uh, Alfred, sorry, yeah. Alfred, yes. Uh, he even said the word Canton. Hmm. And I don't know who thanked him, maybe Marcel thanked him, for removing the stigma and emotions around technical words. Hmm. So I owe you credit for that. You've made federalism, you and others, have made it less of a toxic word because it should have never been toxic. So I thank you for that. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for thanking me. <laughs> <laughs> even then. <laughs> no, no, please go ahead. Continue, please. Yeah.